Hi, I've had this Tesla Model 3 for about three years now, and in that time I've traveled 38,000 odd kilometers, and I've taken a lot of care with the battery in this car to make sure that I do everything I can to uh, prolong the life of the battery. So the sort of things I'm talking about is, firstly, I try to avoid high-speed charging at superchargers. I do 99% of my charging at home on a wall charger on AC. I only use the superchargers when I'm on a, a long road trip and I have to use them. I also never charge to 100% and especially never leave the car at that state of charge. So I will charge to 100% uh, on those said road trips at the superchargers, but only when I know I'm going to get straight into the car and drive away so that I don't leave it at, at high state of charge. D during my periods when I'm at home, I leave the state of charge somewhere between 60% and 40%, which is the sort of Goldilocks area for a lithium ion battery in terms of uh, lowering the amount of stress on the cells. And uh, I should say up front that the battery in this car is a uh, NMC type uh, battery or lithium ternary battery. It's not a lithium ion phosphate. So having done all of that, I think it's now probably time in the life of the car to do a, a battery degradation test, which you can easily initiate uh, from the screen within a Tesla. When I say easily, it's very easy to initiate it. However, it does take, it can take up to 24 hours to run the test. And during that time, you can't actually use the car. So it's not a very convenient thing to do, which is why I haven't done it for three years. However, I've got a bit of time now, so I thought I might run it. And also uh, what, I, what I do do and have been doing in the meantime is I use a quick calculation method to work out what the degradation is. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a moment. And this will be an interesting exercise that I'm going through today because I'll have for the first time the uh, stats out of the service screen on the, on the car and I can compare those to my quick calculation. It'll be interesting to see how closely they correlate because if the quick calculation um, is reliable, I would recommend just using that rather than using going through all the palaver of, of using the built-in um, testing function in the Tesla. But time will tell. I'm going to kick the test off now and I'll show you how you do that. And then rather than sit around waiting for it, we'll come back tomorrow when it's finished and we'll look at the numbers. So this is the service screen on my Tesla showing at the moment. And you can see down the right hand corner, the mileage that I've done so far. And uh, when you push the service uh, tab on the left hand side this screen pops up and you can scroll down and if you scroll down to the bottom you'll notice down there that you've got a uh, battery uh, health calculator so this was added in the 25 2025 update to the software and it makes it a lot simpler to to check your battery health so all I do is push that button and a little screen pops up and uh, basically it gives you a prompt and it, it says on my case in my case the battery is healthy um, so it's it's basically reporting that there's no issue with it from a warranty perspective. However, you could argue that that can't be known at this stage because I haven't as yet ever run the battery check. So how could the software actually know how healthy the battery is? But maybe there's some other way it does it. In any case, I'm now going to push the battery health button down the bottom and it comes up with another screen and it basically tells you what it's going to do. It gives you a few warnings. Um, and one of the things it says is that the battery level needs to be 20% or lower for this to work. And uh, in my case, it is uh, lower than 20% because I've just been driving around a bit to run it down and currently it's sitting at 5%. So that's all good. It ha it's telling me it has to be connected to AC charger, which I'm about to do. And it must be able to, the charger must be able to provide five kilowatts of power, which mine can, it can provide up to 11 kilowatts. So that shouldn't be an issue. So now it's grayed out at the, the moment, at the moment down the bottom, it's grayed out because uh, it's not connected to a charger. So I'm just gonna go and fix that now and plug it in. Okay, so now I've plugged the car into the wall charger and we can see the button down the bottom is now blue, which means I can put press it and start the test, which I'll do now. And so now I've pushed the test button. We get this screen here, which is telling me that we've got uh, 10 hours remaining on the test, which is good. Uh, it can take up to 24 hours, so 10 hours is excellent. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch this screen for 10 hours. We'll come back tomorrow and see what result we get. Now, I mentioned the ability to do a quick calculation to estimate your level of degradation of the battery, and that's what I'm doing here. So this was when I was on a recent road trip about a week or two ago, 
and I stopped at a supercharger and I charged the car to 100%, which I would only ever do when I'm on a road trip because it's not good to leave it at that state of charge for any length of time. But I just completed a full charge at the supercharger and it was sitting at 100%. And if you tap on the battery icon, it shows you the estimated mileage for that uh, level of charge. So at that time, it was predicting a mileage range of 532 kilometres. So what is, it's simple then to take that and put that into a, a spreadsheet. And what I've done there is you can see this table on the left. Uh, the first month recorded was September 22, which is when the car was brand new. That's when I took delivery. And it had an estimated range of 602. That was the published range for the car at the time. So we call that 100%. And then all of these other rows are the recordings that I've taken when I've been on road trips. And the most recent one is down the bottom. So this was the one that I took a week or two ago. And it was at that time recording 532. And then quite simply, you just divide the the range at that time by the uh, range of a new battery. Uh, and that gives you a percentage degradation. And I've charted that over here on the right-hand side so you can see how it's fallen away over the three years that I've had the car. And the orange line is the percentage. So it's most recently it's recording at around 88%. And that sort of seems a bit disappointing, especially because I've taken a lot of care with the battery not to uh, stress it too much. But uh, this is quite normal for an NMC battery to fall away like this in the first couple of years of use. And what you can see in the orange line is it's starting to level out. So it, if you were to extrapolate this, it might level out somewhere around 88%, maybe 87%. And then what I should see after that is it should not be falling away as rapidly over time. And the warranty on the battery is eight years with Tesla. So going out to eight years, as long as it stays above 70%, that's all good. If it falls below 70%, then I can put in a warranty claim with Tesla and they'll replace the battery for free of charge. Bada bing, bada bang, it's finished at last. It took about 10 hours and it's completed with this message on the screen, which tells me that my battery has degraded to 94% of its new capacity. And I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with that because I expected it to be lower. Um, by my rough calculations, um, it was showing about 88%. So I'm actually six points better off than I thought I was, which is very encouraging, <laughs> especially since the effort I've made to to uh, nurture my battery and take care of it. So the numbers are in, and I think it's fair to say that the battery is faring very well after the first three years. Uh, it's important to note that the first, the early years of a lithium-ion battery are when they most degrade or they degrade most quickly. So it's lost 6% over that time. And another important thing to note about that is that there's a thing called calendar aging that applies to lithium ion batteries. So had I have just stashed that battery away inside a shed somewhere for three years, in all probability, it would have degraded two or 3% anyway over that time, which really means that the degradation from using it in the car has been maybe three or 4% over, over three years. So I'm very happy with that as a result. I can't say 100% that it's all due to how I've cared for the battery. Um, I've made two videos which you can view on, on my recommendations on how to look after it, and those are certainly the things that I've done with the battery. But it's impossible to know for sure what state of degradation it would be at today had I not done those things. And so I put it out to the people that watch this video, if anybody out there has a, a Tesla of similar age, if you've run a battery degradation test or you're uh, willing to, I would really love to know what the results are so we've got a basis of comparison. In any case, that's the information on how to look after your battery is in the aforementioned videos. I hope this video has brought it all together for you and I hope, hope you found the information uh, interesting and useful. <clears throat> and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, enjoy your electric life.